forward to seeing the rest of the shows on the road this week. Uh, it's Veterans Day, so there's something really important that I think we should talk about. You know, I always say in this show and in my conversations with Lou that it's not about the immigrants. It's about immigration, immigration, a policy. That's what we in this country somehow have to fix, especially, you ready? Especially if the immigrants in particular are willing to give their lives for this country, die for the United States of America. On this Veterans Day, here are the facts, and these are important. More than 100 immigrants have gone to Iraq or Afghanistan and gotten killed as part of the U.S. military. That's important. Thousands more are there fighting for our country right now. In fact, tens of thousands, we now learn. And the president has signed an order that gives those guys something called the fast track, which essentially says this. Look, if you're willing to fight for America, you should be treated like an American. Those people, it's like an exception. Well, most people would agree with that, right? Not William Gein. He's joining us right now. He's the president of Americans for Legal Immigration. Let me read to you, Mr. Gein, what the president actually said. Let's put that up if we can. If somebody's willing to risk their lives for our country, quote, they ought to be full participants in our country. Where is he wrong? Well, immigrants in the military are fine, but trying to stick illegal aliens in the military. Come on, Rick. They've shown a disregard for our territorial jurisdiction, our borders. Do you think well, that, that, that is that is what we're talking about? We're talking about well, what you, you would call illegal aliens. Those are the okay, ones well, the president is talking about. All right. About. Th th well, you call them immigrants, and I wish you would stop insulting immigrants uh -huh. by comparing them to illegal aliens. It's very rude to call them that uh, because immigrants have done things the right way. Illegal aliens have broken many laws. Well, actually, very, actually, very I'll tell you, I'll tell you where you're wrong. Most of the people who are, in your words, illegal aliens or illegal immigrants, actually came to the United States legally. And and then tried to process their papers after they were here or allowed their visa to expire. So they actually came into the country legally to begin with. And that's about half the people that you call illegal aliens. Answer well, that, sir. Well, right at that point, they become legally termed illegal aliens. And they, it is an affront and anti-immigrant to try to compare them to America's law-abiding immigrants. So, now, you're say, so you're saying a soldier goes to Iraq, either dies or is there willing to die for his country and still we shouldn't make an exception? Hold your answer because we've got a report that we prepared. I want you and our viewers to watch this and then we'll talk about it a little bit more on the other side. Here's CNN's Ted Rollins now following one immigrant who fought in Iraq and just took the citizenship oath. 35-year-old U.S. Army Sergeant Darwin Phillips saw combat in Iraq wearing an American uniform, but he's never seen the inside of an American voting booth because he is a foreigner. I believe deeply about this country and what it stands for. I'm willing to, to put my, you know, my life to defend this country. That I will support and defend. Until this ceremony last week, Phillips was not an American citizen. This is the payback the U.S. government gives Sergeant Phillips and other immigrants willing to put their lives on the line for America, a fast track to citizenship. Justice for all. At this ceremony, Sergeant Phillips was one of 36 so-called green card troops representing 17 different countries that became citizens of the country they'd already been defending. Darwin Phillips came to the U.S. 15 years ago from the Philippines. His wife, Nicole, and three sons are already U.S. citizens. It makes me so proud of him and of all his accomplishments and his dedication to everything that he does every day for our country. Because of his service, Sergeant Phillips was allowed to move through the citizenship process faster than someone not in the military, saving him an estimated year and a half. He also didn't have to pay the $600 plus in filing fees. Immigration officials say these soldiers do get preferential treatment, but it's not a free ride. They fill out the same forms, they do everything, but we just, as we say, we have a special law agency and organization in Nebraska that handles these applications and handles them very quickly. Is it fair for you to get different treatment just because you're in the military? We serve in the military knowing that, you know, this is what we want. So, you know, sacrificing our, our you know, putting our life in the line even before we're citizens, you know, bearing arms. This is it right here. Darwin Phillips says taking the oath of citizenship fulfills a dream he's had since coming to America. He's looking forward to voting for president next year, and if he's sent into harm's way again, he'll be defending a country that is his. Now I'm truly part of America, and it's wonderful. Ted Rowland, CNN, Las Vegas, Nevada.
All right, so, Bill, you tell this guy, he comes back to the United States, hey, thanks for doing your job, thanks for sacrificing your life, now get out of the country, you're deported. You'd say that no, to him. No, I'd say if he's an illegal alien, he shouldn't be in the military anyway for three important reasons. One, it's ridiculous to think that illegal aliens are going to defend our borders and our states against invasion, Rick. Two, we already have a problem where forces trained by the U.S. military, such as Los Zetas, which controls the border more than the Border Patrol, were trained by the American military at Fort Benning, South Carolina. Now they're importing drugs and illegal aliens. Well, hold on a minute. I'm, I want to go back. I want to go back to number one. I just started thinking about what you just said. It's ridiculous to think that an illegal alien would defend, defend our, our borders. You just had yeah. one. We, ju we just had one on the air who did just that. That's an you said that the guy's an illegal alien. He is. In the military. He's an illegal alien he, in the military. He, he, needs, he needs to be arrested and detained as soon as possible and put back in his home country. You, you think that <laughs> training these people with arms Man. and demolitions is a good idea? You got 60 percent of the people in Mexico that feel that the United States shouldn't even control the southwest United States and you're going to train them in arms and explosives? Bet the French are glad they didn't do that before the illegal aliens started burning half the country over the last two years. So man, right? you just hate these guys. You just no, them. there's I mean, no hate. The punished. truth All is not hate. No, no. But wait the a minute. This, guy, not this guy's not. A, he's a decent American. He's married. He's got a lovely family. He loves this country, and he's willing to give his life for his country, just Rick, like a hundred one already have. You just lost this debate. The Dream Act, which would have allowed military uh, service to turn into citizenship, didn't even get off the ground. And Rasmussen polls reports that only 22 percent of the public supported that measure, right. and 68 opposed it. We've had this conversation. Yeah, hey, but you we know, have but, won. But you know what? We've won I mean, it. If all you want to do is tell me that you're right because there's a majority of people who agree with you. Man, I can go back in, in history and tell you about majorities that agreed with a lot of things that we've got. Well, hey, why don't you do why don't you do this in American history? Why don't you why don't you why don't you do this in American history? Go back and read about how it is the people of this country that run this country, Rick. Why don't you study that and let's reflect the will of the American people. What does that majority. have to do with anything? I mean, because here in the America, will of the, the majority, people run the will of the majority was to defend slavery as well. I mean, that no, was wrong. No, that's uh, what, uh, Rick. You're playing a race card. You're trying to be the Al Sharpton. You're trying to be the Al Sharpton of illegal immigration. We've already got Geraldo but, doing but this William, projection but William, but William, racism but William, thing. With all due we respect, don't need that. And, I, and I like you, and I like the fact that you come on our show, and we always have good, decent, respect. I even wore the blue arguments. shirt. I wore the blue shirt you like. <laughs> Here's the point that I'm trying to make. These guys who go and defend their country are decent Americans. They're not here to, to hurt the United States in any which way. Would you not agree with that? If I they're mean, an illegal alien, they're not an American, and they're not decent. They've broken the laws, all right. and they're illegal aliens. All right, we'll continue the conversation at another time. My thanks to you, William Gein, for coming on and talking to them.